Hi everyone, welcome back. I know it's been a while, been busy, had the flu, all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> I finished this painting a bit ago and I posted it on Facebook and I have gotten more comments on how do you get that sky? Of course, the shadow you see is of the, the little holder for my phone. But the sky itself is pretty even and dark at the top and light at the bottom. So I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to make this smooth wash. We'll get rid of this guy for a minute. <clears throat> I stretched my paper. Um, I'm using 140 pound cold press arches, so I have to stretch it. Um, this method is so wet that even if you use 300 pound, you're going to have to um, you're going to have to put tape it down because I use so much water that it will it will buckle. So I've got I've got it taped down and it's just about dry, dry enough so it's not buckling. And I used a, a water activated tape, um, the same one that I use in my demonstration video of how to stretch a piece of paper. The only trouble with it is when it gets very wet, once it's on here, it's fine, but it's, it's water activated. And if you get too much water on it, all it does is get underneath the paper, dissolve the, the, the glue and the whole thing falls apart. So what I usually do is after the paper and the tape have dried, I take um, some artists, white artists tape, comes in a roll like this, and um, put that uh, over the edge a little bit more. I'll usually put it wherever I have decided the end of my painting is going to be. So I'll do this cover it up. That way, when when I start sluicing this thing with water, um, I won't pull up the tape because this is, this is waterproof. Put that down. Now, if I was um, actually doing a picture, I would take a burnisher and I would burnish all these edges and, and the joints so that no paint could leak underneath. You know, it really doesn't make any difference because you have to have the painting matted and framed anyway, but I really like that nice white edge you get when you take the tape off at the end of the painting process. Kind of fun. All right. So what I've done is I've made myself up a couple of puddles. One is uh, a combination of phthalo blue and cobalt blue. And the other one is just straight dioxazine purple. They're very watery. There's a lot of water in them. All right. Now, <clears throat> when you get ready to do this, you might want to put a towel or paper towels or something underneath your... Um, your um, board because this can get really sloppy <laughs> making a mess with paint just like in kindergarten okay I'm going to flood this paper with water now you can use any kind of a big brush you can use a square brush you can use a hockey brush which is nice to use for putting the water on I like to use these mop brushes for a couple reasons. One, they hold a lot of water. Um, much more water than a, a square one or a bright or anything like that. Number two, they're a little smaller, which means I need to slow down. I need to take my time, even just putting the water. And you can see I'm putting a lot of water 
on this page. All right. Now, and I also have little fuzzies from my sweater in there. That's that's all right. We're not going to worry about it because this isn't a painting. It's just a demonstration. Okay. So I'm going to take my brush, dip it in some water, because I want even more water than I have on here. And I'm going to put down the blue. And I'm not going to worry about what direction I'm going in right now. I just want to get the blue on here. And as you can see, I've got plenty of water. So I'm certainly not worried about an even wash. Okay, and I'm going to tilt it up like that. Just going to tilt it. Nice angle. Pull that paint down a little bit. Now it's going to collect at the bottom. And as it does, you can take a piece of paper towel and wipe that off a little bit as it collects. Okay, I'm going to let that sit in. Now this is an old piece of paper and it's probably been banging around for a while now that it's gotten some paint on it you can see a a scratch something happened to it just as well i'm using it for practice huh all right now i'm going to take a little bit more color and i'm going to start from here and work my way down So you see, actually, there isn't a whole lot of technique to this. Basically, it is letting, I'll take a little water and do this end. I'll turn it upside down this way. Let the paint <clears throat> move in there. And I may add a little, let's add a little pink in here. Just the tip of my brush into the pink. <clears throat> Okay, now we'll turn it back up. Turn it this way again. All right. Now that's really soaked. So we're going to let that dry. And I'll be right back. And keep it tilted. I'm going to keep it tilted a little bit this way. Or maybe I'll lay it flat. Okay, we're dry. So we're going to um, do this again. I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'm going to um, wet my paper. I don't think we're totally dry. I'm not going to worry about that. That that slice in the middle is really prominent, isn't it? Oh well. 
lesson to me. Use your paper. Don't let it sit around and get damaged. But you cut these odd little pieces, end up being sitting in the drawer. All right, get a little excess water off the edges. As you can see, it's already, it's seeped underneath. It didn't stay sealed. I don't think it was really very dry yet. I'm gonna take some more of that color. I'm gonna start at the top again, or at the bottom, and work my way down. Keep working my way down. And down again. Wash out my brush. Mop up a little bit of that color. I want this to be a graduated wash. I may have added a little too much color at the top. That's all right. Okay, we're going to let that slide down. And while it's sliding, we're going to add a little bit more color here. Let that color drift down to the bottom. Add a little bit more down to the, at the bottom third. While it's still wet. And down. Sorry, I'm making you dizzy. And down at the, ooh, look at that. Lots of, lots of water. I'm going to take my dioxazine purple and I'm gonna add it to the bottom, which is the top. And I'm going to turn it upside down and let that drift. The purple added to that blue just makes it a little darker. Gives it a little bit more depth. Like those endless blue sky as you see in the summertime. Okay, and then I'm going to add the, basically the last of the blue. I need to put a little bit more in there. To that. Blue. Turn it upside down again. Let that do its thing. It's fun. You sit there and watch that stuff. You can see it in and out, all the little nooks and crannies 
of the textured paper. It's very interesting. And depending on how light you want it to be at the horizon, um, whether you want to put some clouds in there, um, you can do that too. And put a little mist in there with a piece of Kleenex. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I think the uh, the ticket is to um, get some thunderheads rolling up over here. The ticket is to um, have some mist over here. Keep it wet. All right, and that's your graduated stock. When this is all dry, I will dry it and then show it to you. It will be um, very evenly colored and a nice bright sky blue. That purple is the trick at the very end there is to put a little of that dioxazine purple in. And let me dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, there, we're all dry. We have a bright blue sky, misty and hazy down at the bottom, a couple little clouds. And that's how you do that even wash. It's messy. There's lots of water. <laughs> and if you're not sure whether you got it as dark as you want, don't keep adding color. Let it dry. Um, I didn't allow it to dry by itself because I didn't have time to do that in between um, while I'm doing this video. But but it's almost better to let it dry at least almost all the way until it's not shiny anymore by itself. And then you can take a hair dryer to it and finish it up. But it's better to let it dry and then add deeper color um, instead of constantly adding more color because you're adding so much water it's just going to soak the paper through and it will take forever for it to dry. So um, there's your little uh, tutorial on how to make a, a even sky wash and um, enjoy. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe and press like if this was helpful and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.